getting into really the four teams out of the nine who haven't made the college football playoff before, this is where it starts to get spicy, right? Because to finish this out, we had Tennessee, LSU, USC, Clemson, North Carolina. Of those nine teams that I had mentioned, four of them have never made the playoff, right? So the first one to mention for me, and this is going to go backward and forward so I can land on the point that I want to raise at the end of this, North Carolina. North Carolina ain't even supposed to be in this conversation. So for them to be in this conversation just basically a week before Thanksgiving is phenomenal. Full respect to what Mac Brown has done and more specifically what Phil Longo has done with that offense. Coming into this season, nobody was sure that Drake May was even going to be the starting quarterback. It was Jacoby Criswell who was getting kind of the lead. Phil Longo's going, Drake's got a lot of talent, but I'm not sure that I want to trust him back there. And he looked like a giraffe on skates to start the season. But he has so grown into that position, and his talent has manifested. He has vaulted himself not just from being one of the best players in the ACC to the best freshman in the ACC to a Heisman Trophy contender over these previous 11 weeks. His one loss to a Notre Dame team that also lost to Clemson, a team that is in this conversation, but also... You know, it's going to get the benefit of the doubt of having won two national championships inside the college football playoff format. UNC has not been in the deep water in this way. I'm curious if they go and beat a Clemson in the ACC championship game, and let's say they do it by two touchdowns, how are you going to keep them out if, if Texas Christian, Ohio State or Michigan, Georgia are all undefeated, right? What are you going to do there? Are you going to really try to vault Tennessee into that spot knowing they don't have a conference championship? going to be interesting and for UNC this would be such a big deal and it would round out a phenomenal 2022 for the University of North Carolina because it is not quiet and it is not kept UNC handed Mike Krzyzewski its final his final loss at Duke in the final four sent him packing with Hubert Davis their first black head coach in UNC history showing him the door now they get to the Kansas Jayhawks and they take an L but if UNC can make the college football playoff in the same year that they made the Final Four, they were joined just one other school that has pulled that off. You're right, my university, Oklahoma Sooners. Yeah, yeah, and we're a softball school. That's not quiet, and that's not kept either. That's what we do. We play softball, okay? We especially play softball when my team is not in one of these nine spots or one of these four spots because we're just not good this year. All right, next on the list for me is pac 12s USC. It's final hope at breaking its drought of having not had a team in the college football playoff for six years. Washington is the last team to make the college football playoff from the Pac-12. And that was so long ago that their head coach is working on a desk at Fox. That's what it is for the Pac-12 right now. Y'all are so good at eliminating each other that we have replaced Clemsoning on this show with Oregoning because that's just what it is. now. UCLA took a loss to Arizona in a really competitive game that I think people are dunking on Arizona because they've been bad the last few years. But if you stayed up until 1, 2 a.m. local like I did to watch the game, you'd see that that's a different Arizona team than the ones that you've seen in years past. And they absolutely gave UCLA the business. UCLA also got some really great wins on its resume. Washington, the team that beat Oregon. And Utah, the team that damn near, right? Damn near was still in this conversation. but lost or got that win against USC, the team that we expect to make the the Pac-12, excuse me, the college football playoff if they make the Pac-12 championship game and win. You got to beat UCLA this weekend. You have to beat Notre Dame the next, and then you can't lose in the the Pac-12 championship. And then you have to hope that one of these teams that is Tennessee, Texas Christian, Ohio State, Michigan, Georgia, not only take an L, but just kind of don't look good, especially in the case of Tennessee. We're still talking about them because frankly, They deserve to be talked about. That's the third team of these four that has not made the college football playoff. And I think it would be phenomenal for them to get there because they get to experience what Oklahoma experiences. Yeah, we feel good about getting to the playoff with one loss. We have a dynamic offense. We can absolutely score on everybody not named Georgia. But then Georgia shows up and they drop a hammer on your head. Now, the issue I have with this is Oklahoma normally had to wait until the college football playoff to get hammered by the likes of Clemson, Georgia, LSU, and Alabama. Good God, man. And each year, those are really good damn football teams. Now, Tennessee already got beat down by Georgia. And I, for one, don't want to see them play another road game against Georgia. But it's there. 
And we're going to talk about why that is significant. But look, Tennessee hadn't been good, like good, good since the 20th century, right? 25 years ago, they were good, good. And even in those 25 years, you had Amon Green showing up to your door to show Peyton Manning what's really good because that Nebraska team was absolutely tearing you apart. And then Team Martin and whatnot, so forth, so on. And then Phil Fulmer said the balls are back, and they absolutely were not. We got Derek Dooley on stools. We got Lane Kiffin getting run out on a rail. We got Butch Jones talking about Eric Stryker have some, show some class. All of that transpired. And what did Tennessee have to get into the playoff? But the last Oklahoma quarterback to win a national championship and an Oklahoma alumnus leading its program. Also, I'm going to point this out because I pointed this out in the Saturday live show. I'm going to point it out again for you. Tennessee, you're welcome. From uh, uh, us Oklahoma fans, this is your Christmas present. Oklahoma lost five conference, cha- uh, conference games in a season for the first time since 1998. You know what happened the last time Oklahoma lost five conference games in one season? Tennessee won the national championship. So apparently the college football playoff selection committee watches the number one college football show, not unlike yourself. All right. On this list, finally, I want to end with this one as we're talking about these four. Texas Christian. My goodness, what it would be for the Texas Christian Horn Frogs to walk into the college football playoff strutting. I don't give a damn if they are going to go up against Georgia that might hand them their head. Look, take it back to 2014, okay? We had three teams that absolutely positively deserved to be playing in the college football playoff, but you could only have one. One of them was Ohio State, goes on to win the national championship and make the committee look very, very good. One is Baylor, who was stopping a mud hole in almost everybody they played and walking it dry. And the other was Texas Christian. Now, this is interesting because Texas Christian joined the conference just three years prior, 2012, and was bad in 2013 and was awesome in 2014. Stopped a mud hole in Iowa State and walked it dry. And the college football playoff selection committee thumbed its nose at the small Christian university in Texas for the very large state university in Ohio. Now, in Ohio State's defense, they had been monsters for the two years prior, and Texas Christian had not, right? They ran the table in 2012 undefeated and did not get to play for a national championship when they're probably the team to beat Alabama and not Notre Dame. Sorry, producer Tyler. But they had a bowl ban. And then in 2013, they're very good again. 2014, yeah, you lose to Vautech, but you've been running the table ever since. They get to the playoff, and they take care of business, all right? Since then, though, many of us have asked the question, what happens if Texas Christian is in an expanded playoff or even gets into that four spot? And now Texas Christian is in a position to get in there whether the college football playoff committee likes it or not because they satisfied the top-line criteria. Are you a Power 5 team? Only one non-Power 5 team has made the playoff. Did you run the table? And did you win your conference championship? Because those are all more or less data points, save the are you a Power 5 team, but you get what I'm saying. They're about brands, just like you're about brands. If I show you two boxes of Kleenex, you're probably going to pick the one that says Kleenex and not the one that says great value because that's just how you roll, right? Now, I also think it's fascinating because Gary Patterson, is who is synonymous with Texas Christian football. And how could he not be? He is the reason we talk about them. They have been great for 20 years because of him. Stepped down last year and then took a job at the place that he absolutely destroyed, loved destroying the University of Texas. They still got the statue out in front of TCU because that's how they roll. They're going to be the bigger people quite literally because they got the bigger statue, you get what I'm saying? But They went and whooped up on Texas, and they did it in a way in which I've said you have to do to win championships. you got to have a defense. In this day and age of college football, everybody can score. And Sonny Dykes is one of those dudes that wants to throw the football. He wants to run it up. He's an air raid guy. He hired Garrett Riley, Lincoln Riley's little brother, who runs a pro raid not unlike Lincoln Riley runs. And frankly, they look a lot similar. I mean, they're, they're literal brothers, right? But Joe Gillespie on the other side has made them into the contender that they are. They run a 3-3 stack that not everybody knows what to do with. They run some really cool simulated pressures. They can occupy one gap with two dudes. Or excuse me, they can occupy two gaps with one dude. Set it backwards. And then they have three safeties that any one of them can come downhill and make tackles for you and be your cleanup crew. Okay? I like them. 
I also think they beat up on Baylor. They beat up on Iowa State. They beat up on, let's say, Kansas State, for the sake of argument now, in the Big 12 championship game. And then they get to thumb their nose at TC, at TC, at the CFP, as TCU. It's late. I'm sorry. Thank you for watching the number one college football show. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss any of the best college football coverage in America.